On the 19th of April 1982, The Cure go on yet another tour. They are overworked, depressed, routinely abusing alcohol and all kinds of drugs. An older and wiser band would have stopped for a breather. The Cure soldier on, but the pressure and the substance abuses are taking a heavy toll on their unity. Fast forward 39 days. On the 27th of May, the animosity between singer-guitarist Robert Smith and bass player Simon Gallup explodes into a physical confrontation. Was this the end of the band? Yes. And no. Hello, Top Potters, this is Simon Mas, your friend with a master's degree in music and a taste for non-committal answers. Trust me, though. If the three or four of you watching this video make it to its end, it will all become clearer. At the end of 1981, The Cure were a tight unit. The tour to promote their third album, Fate, had been difficult, to say the least. The public had not reacted well to their new, bleaker direction. The booing eventually turned into people throwing stuff on the stage. The matter was often settled with brawls. The Cure felt sieged and they stuck together to stagger on. But small cracks were already opening between them. Robert Smith had grown closer to Steve Severin, the bass player of Siouxsie and the Banshees. This made Simon Gallup jealous, bitter, sad that he wasn't Smith's main confidant anymore. Smith had manager Chris Perry constantly asking for more hit songs after Boys Don't Cry and The Forest, and his girlfriend Mary Poole wanted him to disband the cure. The long months of touring had put a heavy toll on their relationship, and Poole was worrying about Robert's mental state. Too much alcohol and drugs. The pressure was immense. And yet, on their first day in the studio for demoing the material for the new album, the Cure were in top form. They performed a whole album worth of new material straight in one sitting. Producer Phil Tornally and engineer Mike Nocito were well impressed. These guys knew their parts. They were determined and were rehearsed. So, where did it all go wrong? But why? It didn't go wrong at all. The Cure wanted to record the ultimate f off album. When Robert Smith retired in Guildford to refine the lyrics, he was at a turning point in his life. I had two choices at the time, which were either giving up completely, like Ian Curtis of Joy Division had a little more than a year before, or making a record and getting it out of me. The Cure made the record, Pornography. They completed it on time, within the allotted budget. Or was it then? Oh yes, if you ignore several facts, that is. Like the prodigious intake of alcohol and drugs during the session. The band spent some £1,600, about £7,000 today, for cocaine alone in the first week in the studio or the rising tension between Gallup and Smith. Smith thought Gallup didn't care about the record. Gallup thought Smith had stopped caring about everyone but himself. Or Toller's seen ability to shake himself from mourning, self-pity and self-destructive drinking. The sudden death of his mother during the 1981 picture tour still haunted him. The Cure worked at least 12-13 hours per day for three weeks, sleeping precariously during the day and recording at night. When pornography was done, The Cure were in a very bad shape. And yet, they decided to immediately go on touring, even before pornography hit the shelves. This caused problems. <laughs> The 14 Explicit Moments tour was a disaster from the moment it began. A solid part of the show featured the Cure's new material which nobody had ever heard. The album 
was not available yet, remember? And even when it was, only the real hardcore fans rushed to buy it and learned all the songs. The music was even more morbid than that of Fate. It was denser, it was much more violent. And the cure looked different too. They wore lipstick around their eyes and mouth, which melted with the heat of the stage lights. They looked like they had been stabbed in the face and had shown up still bleeding. Things got worse the longer we played. At this stage, we were really confronting people and the collective personality of the group completely changed. The tension within the band kept on rising Gallop was particularly bitter towards Tollerst. Smith took it as a sign that Simon was angry towards him, but decided to take it on the drummer rather than facing him. Anyhow, the two stopped talking. Gallop decided to start traveling with the crew, leaving Robert and Lowell by themselves. And Robert decided to isolate himself even more, drinking as much as he could, and sleeping on the floor of his hotel room's toilets. The tension made it easier to perform pornography every night, but this was a ticking bomb. It exploded on the 27th of May in Strasbourg. After the concert, the Cure, the crew and the support act had gone to a club to chill. As Simon Galap was leaving, one of the club staffers stopped him. He was to pay for his drinks. In fact, the staffer had mistaken Simon for Robert Smith. Gallup was dragged to the bar. A commotion ensued. Someone from the crew went for Robert, who spoke good French. Simon was screaming at the barman, this young kid who was nearly in tears. By himself, Simon would never have behaved like that, but he was surrounded by the road crew, so he was behaving the way he thought a rock and roller ought to behave. Gallup told Smith he was not going to pay for his drinks since Smith wasn't paying for his. Smith told him to shut up. Simon punched Robert and Robert punched back and, well, someone went looking for Tollers, but Lowell didn't want anything to do with the matter. If he had intervened to settle the fight, both Smith and Gallup would have taken it on him. When the scruffle was over, Smith went to the hotel picked up his stuff and left. Gallup went back to England to Tullers, woke up the next morning discovering that he was the only cure left in Strasbourg when the tour manager called him to ask what he was going to do with the rest of the dates. Poor lol. Can you imagine waking up like that after another heavy drinking night? In his book Cured, Tollerst half-jokingly reveals that he considered the crazy option to keep the tour going. Having two members of the support act disguised as Robert and Simon and be the only musician performing on the stage as the tape of one of the older shows would blast from the speakers. Such was the level of his desperation. Well, for good or bad, Lol's crazy plan was never tested. When Alex Smith saw his son Robert at his door, he refused to let him in. You have a responsibility as an entertainer, he said. People have bought tickets. Get yourself back on tour. Begrudgingly, Robert called manager Chris Parry and arranged for his return to the band. Parry talked Gallop into returning, too. The Cure would have stayed together to complete their tour, and they did. The final concert was in Brussels on the 11th of June. As the band was performing an impromptu encore piece, Roddy Gary Biddles took the microphone and started screaming abuses towards Smith and Tollerst. And then everything was over. Smith returned home, grabbed a tent and a sleeping bag and went camping with his girlfriend Mary. Gallup formed a new band with Gary Biddles. Fool's Dance. Tollers rented a flat in Paris and spent some time there. It really looked like the cure were over. What an inglorious end. But Simon, you say, what are you going on about? The cure didn't split up in 1982. True, true. But only because the cure are like a phoenix raising from its own ashes. 
At 11th of June night spelt the end of the first start of the band's career. It took several weeks for Robert Smith to understand he still believed in the band, several months for Smith to get in touch with Tullerst, and a couple of years for Smith and Gallup to meet again. But that's a story better told another time. Well, this was supposed to be a really short story, but evidently there was a lot to explain that. And I have a feeling that I am really long-winded. What do you think? Oh, well, if you enjoyed this video, write me a comment with your thoughts, like it, share it with your friends. You know the score. This was Simon Mas, my dear top actors. See you soon on this very channel for more music curiosities. For the moment, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love.